As we've seen already in the course, the main objective of using Revit is to build a 3D virtual model of our design. So here's a very basic 3D model I've got here. We need some way of controlling the height of all these different elements, be it the height that the wall starts at here, the height that the wall goes up to, the height for these doors and these windows. This is where levels come into play in Revit. I'm just going to switch to a south elevation and here we can see the four levels that I have set up in my project and you can think of levels simply as 3D horizontal planes or datums that control the height of different elements within your model. Now a few basic things about levels they are always perfectly horizontal you can't create a sloped level that's not to say you can't have sloped elements in your model you certainly can ramps uh, even walls roofs obviously but the datums or the levels themselves that those elements relate to are always horizontal the levels themselves are infinite in their application what they do consist of is a 2d graphical representation of where that datum is so for example if i had part of my building that was over here in my model world it could still make use of these levels even though the level line the 2d graphical part only extends to there so in the rest of this unit i'm going to show you how to create levels, how to modify and manipulate them, and how we use them in conjunction with our Revit elements. So we've just talked about what levels are in Revit. Let's now discuss when and where you would actually use levels in a, in a real world project. Well, basically, anywhere where you have an important datum in your project. So you can see of the four levels I've got here, uh, we've got top of foundations. That's a, a specific datum I would probably be really interested in. Obviously, the, uh, the finished floor level for the ground floor, the first floor, finished floor level, and I'd probably want an eaves level. Um, so this is a very, very simple uh, building model just for this tutorial. In a real world example, we would probably have many, many more levels. So typically I would be looking for levels to the underside of primary steel work. If we had a parapet roof, I may have a level defining the top of the parapet. I could have levels defining sill heights. Internally, I would probably have levels for all my suspended ceiling heights. Um, Anywhere where there is a key horizontal datum or height in your design, particularly where you may want to make quick adjustments to that level. So again, for example, suspended ceiling heights, they are uh, elements that are often adjusted in height as the design progresses. So uh, the m and &E engineers tell you that they need more of a, a ceiling void, so you need to drop down a suspended ceiling. If we've created a suspended ceiling level and attached our suspended ceiling elements to that level, it is very easy to make an adjustment to the level height itself and then all those elements that are hosted on it will change height accordingly. So the correct use of levels gives you a flexibility and power over your model that you can make quick adjustments to those key heights very quickly. Okay, so we've discussed what levels are, we've talked about when and where you would use them, so let's now look at how we actually create them within Revit. So I've got a new project, I've got a plan view open here, I'm just going to switch to an elevation view. Now in a standard Autodesk default template, there will be two levels created for you to sort of get you started. So level zero and level one. 
I'm going to show you how to create additional levels now. But just before I do that, let's just quickly talk about what we're actually seeing here. So these two levels have their 2D graphical representation. So remember we said before, the level itself is infinite. So don't think you need to extend this just to be able to host elements on it. It is just a graphical representation on each view to show you where the level is. So let's take this top level for an example. We have a level marker at the end to show you that it's a level. We have a level line that represents the height of the datum. We have a level name. So each of these levels that you create can be given its own unique name. I'll show you later on in this unit how to go and easily change that name. And below the level line, Revit actually shows you the height of that level, what we call the elevation of the level. So four meters for this particular one and zero for that one below. So if you like, that's the Z coordinate in your 3D world. So to create new levels, very easy. The first thing you need to do before anything else is make sure you are in a side on view, be that an elevation or a section. Because these are horizontal planes, if you're in a plan view, you can't create them. So I'll just show you that, that effect now. So if we go to architecture, and we move along near the end of the ribbon to the datum panel, we can see we've got level there, the keyboard shortcut LL. I just wanted to show you that if you're in a plan view, that level tool will be greyed out. It's quite a, a, a common thing to happen for beginners. They want to create new levels and they wonder why they can't activate that. It's because you're in a plan view. So let's go back to an elevation. You can see now that tool becomes active. So hit level. And I'm simply going to have two clicks to define that level line. Now, Revit will detect levels that are already set up. So it's offering me what we call an alignment line. I'll cover that very shortly in a separate unit. So it's been helpful and offering me to line up the start of that level with the ones below. So a single click to start. And again, it's offering me an alignment line to align up with the other levels. I can accept that or I can have that line extend wherever I need it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click to place the level. And I can carry on creating levels. Now you can manually click and put each one in. You can use the offset tool and I'll show you that later on. So there's various ways of creating additional levels, but um, the most simple when you're learning is just to use that architecture. Remember, datum panel level tool there. Click to start. And I click to end. And just notice how the level name Revit is automatically assigning a default name. It's just uh, picking the next one in the, the sequence. So level two, level three, level four. As I say, you can go and rename these. And I would suggest you almost certainly want to do that. You'd want something a lot more meaningful than just level one, two, three, and four. So we talked about sort of top of foundations, underside of primary steelwork, something that's more meaningful to you and the rest of the design team. Once we have some levels in our project, it's very easy to make adjustments to their elevation or their heights. So here's a number of levels that we've just created. So let's say I want to adjust the height of level four. I can simply select it. And if I hover over, I get the move icon. I can literally drag it up or down. So really I'm adjusting it by eye. I can also select the level 
and I can click on the elevation itself. Remember the elevation is below the level line and the text box becomes active and now I can type on the keyboard the exact height or elevation I want that level to be at. Hit the enter key and the level will move accordingly. Another way to adjust the the level height if I let's do it with this one if I select that level what you can see spanning between the adjacent levels is are these blue dimensions these are temporary dimensions I'm going to cover these shortly in a dedicated unit on drawing aids but these are called temporary dimensions they come up between most elements in Revit once you select an element they'll show how that selected element relates to its neighbor so I've selected this middle level, level 3 here, and I've got temporary dimensions that have appeared. And again, I can simply click in there and put a new value. So if I know that this level is 3.5 meters below this one, the use of the temporary dimension might be a, a more appropriate way to make that adjustment. Hit the return key, and you can see that level's moved up accordingly. We've already seen how Revit gives each new level uh, a unique name, generally based on the level before, the next available name in the sequence. And we've said that you would probably want to go and rename these levels and give them names that are much more meaningful than actually relate to the, the datum that's important to you in your design. So renaming a level, very easy. Just select the level in question. So you need to select the level first then you can go and click on the level name and you can change it so we'll call this one Eve's height hit the enter key now you'll always get this box that comes up would you like to rename the corresponding view and that is because for each level that we created remember each horizontal datum Revit created a bespoke floor plan view associated with each level. Now in the next unit I'm going to focus specifically on that relationship between the floor plan views and the level. So we'll look at that in detail but just to say in this unit Revit is offering you the opportunity to change the floor plan name to match the change in level name. So I'm going to select yes to that and now our floor plan has been renamed from level 4 to Eve's height to match the name of the level. Earlier on in the course you'll recall that we discussed view specific controls. These are the set of icons that can be found at the base of each window. The first of those view specific controls is the view scale and that's where we can set the scale for each separate view. Now depending on which scale you pick you may find that the level heads and their information start to get a little bit cramped and close to each other. This is where we have the ability to add elbows. So just before I do that I'm going to extend the 2D lines across. I'll just show you how I do that. Select a level and you'll see an open control there which I can stretch. Now if you notice there is a padlock, that is a little padlock icon that's showing me that if I adjust that one all these other ones are padlocked to it. That one has been orphaned by itself but we can go and extend it. Now if I select a level I can adjust them all. You can do the same the other end. You will should be able to just spot that open circle there. So although I haven't got a, a, an actual building model in the background to show you, you can appreciate if this was an elevation view or section view, you may want these level lines to stretch right across in front of your elevation to show where the critical datums are or 
Some people prefer that the levels are all off to the one side and don't obscure the model. So that's why we've got that adjustment there. It's just a graphical override to en enable you to edit how you want those level lines to appear relative to your particular view. So going back to our elbows, so if these start to become too cramped, uh, you can even get to an instance where they're actually overlapping. What we can do if we select that, that level there, for example, you'll notice this little sort of lightning symbol here. If you click on it, it actually puts an elbow or a crank into the level line. And you've got a couple of controls on there. If I lift that up, so you can see by the use of those elbows, I can start to tease the level heads and that information away from each other. Note the level itself and its elevation hasn't changed. It's just this graphical sort of override at the end to be able to pull these heads away from each other so that, to make them more legible. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.